Hey guys, Joe here, and today we're doing the final part of Project Kimchi. Well, I guess it would be part two, but still, it's the final part of it. And as you can see, it is complete and functioning well. Let me go into how. For those of you that watched the first video, you'll see that this is not the original case. It's not the original computer. It's not the original motherboard. And I'll explain why. The Dell case that it was in, the Dell pre-built system, however it was, that was just an AM2 motherboard, which was severely limiting my processor choice. I did get a processor, which is an Athlon X2 5400+. Plus. However, it's just not that fast. It's still only a dual core. And I still may revisit that build and pop that in there and test it anyways. However, this came up out of nowhere and it was a much better deal and still fit within the demands of the name, which was Project Kimchi and Cheap AMD Build. That computer right here still costs less than a jar of kimchi, and I'll explain how. I was on OfferUp, and if I can find the picture in my save folder, I'll actually put it up here for you. And all I saw was the back of a graphics card, the back and the PCB. And I was looking at it, and of course, I was trying to identify it without being able to see what the hell it was. It says Gigabyte on it, and you know, obviously since it doesn't have like a big shroud on it, I didn't think it was anything in a 9 series, but I was hoping it was a 7 series card. So I shot the guy an offer before I did all my research, eh, it happens, and uh, he was asking $150 for this piece of junk. So I shot him a lowball offer, and about an hour later he gets back to me and says, sure. When can you come pick it up? And we made arrangements to meet the next day, and then I started really hunting down pictures to see if I could identify the card. I knew it was a gigabyte, I knew it was a full length card, and I knew it had a blue PCB. So I started looking at all the ones that had DVI, uh, HDMI, and DisplayPort adapters, and at first I thought it was a 760, and I would have been happier if it was. However, as it turns out, this is a 670. Still not a bad purchase because I know what I sold the last one for. So I went over to the guy's place and the first thing he told me was nothing but a lie. He said he bought it from a coworker because she needed some money. This thing was atrocious. Second thing, his apartment, he's a drug dealer or a massive drug user or he just sells to his friends, whatever the case may be. I'm pretty sure that's how he got the computer because the condition of it was terrible. In fact, here is the front fan that was on it. And you can imagine how bad the rest of the system was. I'm going to clean this fan because I like this fan. I actually cleaned the other one. As you can see, it's actually in there and it's clean so it works well. But I started it and the power supply was crackling. It's something, it was labeled as a BFG. It was a Chrome power supply. And anytime it tried to access things like the hard drive or memory or anything, it would crackle. And that was like a no, 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 no. So I turned it off right away and I shot him an even lower lowball offer, which he accepted because let's face it, he didn't own this for anything, probably a couple of joints or something. And I took it and I ran. On the way home, I stopped and picked this up, which is a GTX 960. The reason why the 960 is in here is because it only requires a six pin power adapter and the power supply that's currently in there, the Cooler Master, is only a 500 watt with a single six pin. This being a partner card has a six pin and an eight pin adapter and that power supply doesn't have enough cable to run it, so I didn't. The graphics card that's in there, the GTX 960, is actually already sold. However, I think it was a couple of jokers on eBay. They ran up the bids, so we'll see what actually happens there. But this is confirmed paid and I got 80 bucks for it, which more than paid for the entire system. Let's move on to what the system actually is. And it is a AMD Opteron 1385 quad-core processor. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the Opteron line, Opteron is basically AMD's version of Intel's Xeon processors. So it is the server processor from the AMD line. The motherboard that it's on is an AM2 Plus motherboard. That's why I'm not using the other one. Originally, I was going to put that processor on the other motherboard, but I decided against it. So with this motherboard, I'm able to use an AM3 processor. Additionally, this MSI motherboard, and there may be other motherboards, I'm not sure, but this one, the 770T-C45, has the ability to unlock the cores 
of a Phenom processor, meaning if you have an X2, it can unlock it to an X4. I'm not sure it might even be able to unlock an X3 to an X4. Don't quote me on that, but it may be able to. Because the Phenom processors, the X2 is just an X4 with two cores disabled, and this allows you to unlock them, which is kind of cool, and I want to test that out eventually. If I find like a cheap Phenom X2 for like 10 bucks, I'll pop it in there and see what happens. But getting a quad core processor, motherboard, graphics card, everything for literally zero dollars now was pretty cool. The case that it's in is a Fractal Design XLR2 from all the research I've done. I can't be a thousand percent sure it might be a different version of the XL, but it's definitely an XL because it supports EATX motherboards and the grommets are way over here as well as the design of the cages from my research tells me it's an XL. I like the case. When I first got the case, I didn't like the case because the case came with the parts that are on Red Devil, which is a video I'm still finishing up. And let me show you some video of what that looked like when I got it. Here's the case I was talking about last night. It is a fractal design. It is not actually a Corsair like I originally thought. It looked like a Corsair. But as you can see, that's why I got it cheap. I cleaned that all up. You saw in the footage how uh, it actually looks really nice now. And uh, yeah, with all this extra room, I could do some fun stuff in this case. And I still may. I may throw a water cooling system in here and do something funky and maybe even upgrade that down the road to an X6 once I get a better board. But for now, it's just using an H60 water cooler that I had laying around. Number one, because it's parts I had laying around. Why pay for things when you don't have to? And number two, because of the fact that the factory heat sink that was on there, the heat sink was okay, but the little 80 millimeter fan or 90 millimeter fan that was on there had a bad bearing and it sounded like it was going to break. So rather than do that, I just threw the water cooler on there. Plus, that makes it easier to remove it when I want to change the processors. Two problems I ran into with this system. Number one, it came with four gigs of RAM, but it's only DDR2, so four gigs is really not enough. And I added two more gigs because it only has four slots and my RAM is all one gig. So it has six gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. However, half of it is 800 megahertz and half of it is 667 megahertz. So the system defaults to the slower speed, which is fine until you start overclocking because when you start overclocking, for some reason it skips right over the 667 and starts overclocking from 800 megahertz, which causes memory issues because that memory is not really overclockable. With this setup, I was able to overclock it to 3.2 gigahertz, however, I was having memory problems. If I can get better memory, I can easily go over 3.2. For daily driver duties, it's actually running at three gigahertz, actually just under 2.978 or something like that. Because when you increase the multiplier on the overclock, it increases the RAM frequency. And I didn't want to go too much higher than 800 megahertz because of the other two dims. The other problem I ran into is I don't have any fast hard drives left. The last one I have is already in here, and that's a Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM drive. And the uh, little Hitachi above it was just because that has my only complete copy of Windows 10 with my Steam library on it. So I usually just clone that to the whatever hard drive I put into a system. But I am going to have to keep my eyes open and try to find some SSDs out there, some cheap, you know, $20, 120 gig SSDs on Craigslist or something. Because I can just throw the operating system on there, leave the Steam library on a 500 gig hard drive and just, you know, pop, 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 pop. Pop, pop, pop. Performance numbers come in as such, and I'm just going to make some graphs here because it's re-downloading. I don't know if you can see this. There you go. Uh, because of the memory issues, I had a bad download of Grand Theft Auto 5, which is a pain in the ass because it's a 75 gig file now. So I have it re-downloading the part that was bad. However, I can't use it for my you know capture right now. But let's talk about what it did in Cinebench R15. It ran a 305 CB score, which isn't terrible, especially considering the age of the processor, and in fact is equivalent to an i3-2400 in a pre-built system. So, 
it does okay. The only game so far that I got some good time in it with is CSGO, and in CSGO, I was averaging about 105 to 107 frames per second. That's with the 960, and that's at 1080p everything turned up. And it was pretty consistent, not too stuttery, and I played for about an hour, hour and a half, and it seemed to work fine. Obviously, the CPU is the bottleneck in the system because the GPU, I overclocked it because I overclock everything, but it was running at like 35 to 40 percent. And the CPU was locked in at about 95 to 100 most of the time. So that tells you that the CPU is still the bottleneck. Once GTA 5 gets done, I'm going to upload that. So I'm going to put that right here. Wow, that was pretty impressive, huh? Or, uh, I wish it ran better. Depending on which way it went. In conclusion, would I say Project Kimchi was a success? Yes, yes I would. I think it went well. Project Kimchi, A-OK, -okay, Joe number one guy. And uh, I'm very happy with it, and for just a fun little thing to just leave on the back desk here. When I get some parts for Project Hamilton, because I sold the processor, I got a good price for it, I'll put that on the other side of the desk, and then I'll have Hamilton and Kimchi, and obviously I have Red Devil, so I'll have a few different systems. Here, I'll give you a quick glimpse on what's going on with Red Devil. Ooh, he painted the graphics card. So yeah, that's it. If you liked it, give me the thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a thumbs down. But tell me why. And uh, yeah, become a subscriber. Follow me. Do all that good jazz. Sign up over here or down there. Leave a comment down there. Consider becoming a Patreon or maybe even donating some fun stuff to the channel. I love fun stuff. If you have a Phenom X2 that I can unlock, let me know. And uh, you can click over here and watch another video. So yeah, until next time, I'll talk to you later.